Welcome back to part 8 of the 420cc Predator powered mini articulating dump truck. As you can see from the shot, a lot has changed in the styling of this machine. Actually salvage a bunch of aluminum and start working on a bunch of body work to enclose the engine to protect it a little bit more for some off-road capabilities. Also weld up uh, some hinges and start working on a hydraulic dump. And fabbed up a nice rugged bumper for the front of this machine and installed a winch. And at the end of the video, we're actually going to try out some of the off-road capabilities of this machine. So let's get right into the video, guys. Thanks for watching. One interesting thing I would like to note about all the salvaged aluminum here is uh, in its previous life before it turned into a hood, it was actually used as a snowboard molds for uh, snowboard manufacturing. The only downside really with it is it had a ton of mold release all over everything so everything had to be cleaned up really well before welding it. Alright you guys, got that curved piece of aluminum in here, had to do some bending with the vise. As you know I'm working with some crude caveman stuff here, but did the best with what I got and actually turned out pretty good. I'm going to tack weld it and get on to the other side here. Got the side plate mounted on here, and I got stainless steel hardware holding this on, countersunk. So keep in mind, this top plate and this side plate are all going to be fixed. I think this is going to be something that's going to be mounted to the cab down the road when I get the cab built on here. This side panel unscrews, and I'm going to do one more mount down here. Mainly, I put this little window in here for a little extra cooling, and I can visually see the belt in here, and kind of take a look at the hydraulic pump, check my brake reservoir without taking the side cover off or popping the hood and uh, looks cool anyways. Got a basic grill drawn up here. I think it's gonna actually look pretty good once I get that um, locker room mesh on there and the headlights. So we're just gonna double check the tool path real quick. All right, looks good. We'll uh, send it over to the plasma table here and cut this out. Originally it was going to come off the front of the frame and come up straight up and only have about a half inch a little eyebrow of the top of the hood hanging over it. But I didn't like the look, it just looked a little too crude. But next we're going to work on some uh, aluminum hinge brackets down here so I'm going to cut these on the lathe next.
So last night I got the grill cut and put it on here. I was gonna have a little half inch brow on this and it looked awful. The big wide flat front end. Of course it'll look a little better with the bumper, the grill and lights in it. And I'm gonna have some aluminum fenders here so it'll break up the box in this. No, it's just a tractor, but it looked awful. So what I ended up doing is relaxing the grill angle about two and a half, three inches back. And I'm gonna start off by cutting this corner off of here on both sides. I'll probably bring the whole overhang brow on the hood back, but it's easier to remove than add material later. So we're gonna take our time with this and uh, see if we come up with a little bit better results. So I'm gonna take this thing out for a little uh, drive around, just kinda change up the video a little bit, and plus I've been having a lot of fun cruising this thing around, see what it'll drive over. So next few minutes, just gonna be cruising this thing over rocks and logs and uh, off-roading with it.
so I'm gonna take a little break on the hood for a little while. This feels a lot more important. The hood's just cosmetic. This is actually gonna get something else accomplished. I actually went to a uh, fabrication shop yesterday and bought some offcuts from their scrap pile. And this is gonna be pretty good stuff for working on the whole framework for the dump bed here. So next we're gonna go over to CNC and cut out some hanger brackets for the back hinges. Let's go do that next. So that placement looks about right. I think that's about 20 and a quarter inches. Should work pretty good. guys as much as I really want to finish off this dump bed in this video I'm actually waiting on a hydraulic cylinder keep in mind mostly everything on this build has had to be mail order and it's at least a week out the little town I live in is kind of ridiculous even the other day I needed a number 40 master link for some chain and I went to a few different hardware stores and no one had anything in stock and they're like well we can order you something in at that point I'm just gonna order 10 of them for myself for the same price so we're gonna get on to uh, painting next and then after that the bumper What do you think about the grill? Well, to tell you the truth, it still kind of looks like a 1960s robot. Bit ugly. 
Yeah, it's kind of feeling the same. Got any ideas? Yeah, what I was thinking was, though, if possibly we could put a bumper up front and maybe mount a winch to it. That might help it out. Let's give it a try. Just upgraded tank size, I think this is like a 92, about double the capacity. Had 2,000 pounds in it this time, which is nice. And uh, interesting thing is, this is about $5 more to get filled up with twice the, the gas in it. It's kind of interesting, when you go over to this size, I guess you get a discount on the gas. Good thing to know. there you go got that thing fully welded out it's definitely not gonna win any beauty awards it's just function over fashion anyways that's what this whole machine's all about one thing to note if you're gonna weld something like this and you want to entirely cap it in um, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go through and drill a small hole on the bottom side of it somewhere so when you're finishing off your last weld the, the gas is expanding inside the tube doesn't bubble out and cause problems in your weld and you can always go back through and spot weld that little hole in later. I actually drilled two holes in the bottom side, one on each side, mainly because if any water ever got into here, I wanted to be able to drain out. I don't want to come out to it in the middle of winter and see the, the bumper all expanded or torn apart from freezing. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is mount these up on the side here, drill and tap them, and weld them onto the bumper. Let's get going. So you can get uh, indexing center punches that pretty much have a bunch of different diameters so you can get the whole alignment center punched perfectly. I don't have one of those kits, it's something I need to add to my list. But I just took a drill bit that matches the same size hole here. I'm just gonna go through and uh, dimple it slightly so I can start drilling and tapping. Got both sides drilled and tapped. I got them bolted on here. Keep in mind, I added a washer on this side only behind the bolts here and the plate, mainly just to give me a washer's width thickness overall. So when I take this thing off and bench weld it, it actually slides back onto here. It's kind of good to uh, clearance items like that a little bit rather than clamping it tight to the frames on both sides. You'll find that it won't fit usually after you weld it. So I'm gonna fire up the welder. I'm gonna drape something over the front of this, protect this beautiful rattle can paint job, tack weld it, and we'll put it on the bench and finish off the welds.
Alright you guys, got the hood finished and we got the bumper and the winch mounted. I'm pretty happy how that bumper turned out. It uh, really breaks up the front end, makes it look a little bit better. We got the dump bed partially done. The reason I didn't put the salvage aluminum on it was because I'm still waiting on a hydraulic cylinder for it. And that's going to be coming in next week and it would have been a lot easier for me to mount that without the aluminum skin on the dump bed. So next part of this video here, we're just going to finish it up by driving this thing off road a little bit and try out that winch. run down the driveway here. We got the tires aired down about 10 psi so it should be a little smooth ride. What other trails do you think we should take it out? We could do that one that I cleared out last spring. It might be kind of grown over. The dirt bike trail? Yeah, it might suck if you get stuck. I guess I got the winch. That's right. All right.
got a little souvenir. All right, gonna do a quick little example of how this thing does traction wise with my little Suzuki sidekick. I got it in four low and I got some brand new Mudstar tires on here. And uh, we're gonna go up the steep incline here. It's really mucky and I doubt it's gonna make it in four low. We're gonna run this thing up and I'm positive it's gonna make it. if I take a run at it. Well, I'm gonna go on the wall of shame here. Couldn't make up the hill. I'm pretty confident this thing's gonna charge right up it. As you can see it went right up the hill the Suzuki only made it halfway on not only that I turned when I came up here and climbed up this embankment a little tire spin on this but it charged right up it does a lot better than that Suzuki does Well, video's getting kind of long, so it's kind of nice to wrap it up. Never got an opportunity to run the winch. Never got this thing stuck. It pretty much drove everywhere I wanted to go. So next episode, we will for sure break out the winch. We'll try to go up some steeper inclines, get this thing stuck. I'm waiting on the hydraulic cylinder, so the next episode, we will have a hydraulic dump bed finished on there. We are going to be coupling that with a 12-volt hydraulic pump a friend gave me. It needs a little bit of work. Um, we're going to add extra traction, hopefully, to this thing also. Uh, this is a kind of a neat little coupler I've come across recently and my friend was talking to me about some interesting ideas for adding adjustable limited slip to this thing. So I'm going to show you guys a picture of a coupler and I know what it's called but see if you guys know what this is. Leave a comment down below if you do know what it is. And next week I plan to do a question and answer video. I'm going to go back through the whole series and there's a lot of questions people had over the series. And so next episode is going to be a lot of driving and answering questions on this thing. So leave a comment down below if you want me to go into more detail in the question and answer video about anything you want to know about this machine. All right, you guys, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Go back through and check out the series from the beginning if you're not familiar with it. You can see this thing start from some basic frame rails and build up to this machine. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Till next time, take care. Bye.